Okay, so now we know how to calculate an equilibrium constant from partition functions. And we've seen if we have reactions that only involve diatomic molecules, there's some significant cancellation that occurs. But not every reaction involves only diatomic molecules. So let's take a simple molecule that still involves two gas um, phase species, but with some monatomic atoms instead of diatomic molecules. So in this case, two Br, two bromine atoms, uh, combine or dimerize to form bromine gas, Br2, diatomic bromine gas. So we know how to write down partition functions for monatomic species just as well or even easier than we do for diatomic species. So we can also write down the equilibrium constant for this reaction. That's going to be partition function of products raised to their stoichiometric coefficients over partition functions of reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. So as long as we can write down partition function of Br2, which we've already done, partition function of Br atoms, which is uh, even easier, then we can determine what this equilibrium constant is going to be. So for Br2, I've got a translational component. I've got a rotational component that looks like temperature divided by, uh, I'll just say the symmetry number for bromine is uh, 2. I've got a vibrational component. Uh, sorry, this should be rotational constant for Br2. So still in the numerator, I've got a vibrational component, e to the minus vibrational temperature of Br2 over twice kT over 1 minus an exponential of the vibrational temperature of Br2 over kT. That's the vibrational term. I have a bond association energy term. And I have a, an electronic partition function, which is just 1 for Br2. That's the numerator. The denominator, luckily, is not quite as ugly. Partition function for Br, I can write the translational piece, 2 pi mkt over h squared, raised to the 3 halves. But I'm just going to square it in the denominator, so that 3 halves becomes a 3. Also, I've got a volume that shows up in the uh, translational partition function. And that gets squared because the whole partition function is being squared. For the rotational part and vibrational part, and for the bond association part, I don't have to worry about those at all. This is a monatomic atom, so it doesn't have any rotational um, states. It doesn't have any bond to vibrate. It doesn't have any bond to dissociate and worry about a bond dissociation energy. So I don't have to worry about these terms at all. I do have to worry about the electronic degeneracy. In this case, let me say the. Uh, degeneracy for Br2 is 1, and the G that I'm going to square for bromine atoms, because bromine atoms have an unpaired electron in them, they're doublets. The degeneracy is 2 for a bromine atom. All right, so now we have a little simplification we can do. It's not nearly as much cancellation as we saw for the reaction that involved only the diatomic molecules. For example, I've got a volume in the numerator and a volume squared then in the denominator. I can cancel one of them, but that means I'm left over with one volume in the denominator. Likewise, the 2 pi kT and h squared, those are only going to partially cancel. I've got the, all those quantit constants to the 3 halves up top and to the third in the denominator. So after that cancellation, a minimal amount of cancellation, I see that I've got If I ignore the masses, the, an extra factor of 2 pi kT over h squared to the 3 halves in the denominator after these cancel. So I'll put that back up in the numerator and flip it upside down. I've got a 1 over V that didn't end up canceling. I've got the rotational terms that are purely from the 
Br2 molecule. Vibrational terms also purely from the diatomic molecule. Bond association only matters for the diatomic molecule. And then this ratio of uh, degeneracies is a 1 in the numerator and a 4 in the denominator. So as before, we can plug in some numbers and see what value this quantity has. Let's say this partition function, let's calculate at a temperature of 298 Kelvin. So every time I need to plug in a temperature, I'll use 298. We know many of these constants. I should, uh, um, oh, I've forgotten the masses. So this was everything not including the masses. I've got to insert one more term here, which is um, mass of Br2 to the 3 halves in the numerator and a mass of Br cubed in the denominator. Those masses, the mass of Br 79.9, I believe, 79.918. Sorry, 79.918 grams per mole for the mass of bromine. Double that for the mass of, of bromine molecules. Uh, rotational constant, vibrational constant, dissociation energy we've already seen in the previous video where Br2 was one of the reactants, so I'll use the same values there. If I do this arithmetic, keeping the pieces separate at first, this contribution from these constants and the masses works out to be a very small number. But notice that we have to be careful with units. So the units of these h squareds and k's and t's and masses don't completely cancel like they did in the previous case. And the, the net quantity that we end up with has units of volume, which is going to have to cancel the units of volume in this 1 over v term. So if I do that in, in units of liters, it turns out to be this ridiculously small number of liters that hasn't yet included this 1 over v term. I haven't told you what volume we're going to use. The rotational term is 1,300. The vibrational term, 0.58. The bond association energy contributes a very large contribution. 2.1 times 10 to the 34th. That number is unitless. And then we have a 1 over 4 from the electronic degeneracy. So notice we're in a different situation now than we were for the HBr formation reaction. Because this, of this lack of cancellation, we've got this 1 over v term. We can't finish the arithmetic until we know what volume we're interested in. So if I throw some bromine atoms into a box with volume 1 liter, and I use one liter here, then I can evaluate uh, the constant. In fact, if we do that, if we say volume equals one liter, then the value of the equilibrium constant that we get is now a unit less 1.6 times 10 to the seventh, strongly towards product. Bromine, not surprising perhaps that bromine atoms will strongly prefer to dimerize and uh, form Br2 molecules. or Let's say I did this not in a volume of one liter. Let's say I make a box, a box as big as a large room, let's say that's 50 meters on a side, so a fairly large auditorium scale room. 50 meters on a side, cube that number, and I get a volume that's in meters cubed. If I use that volume here, doing my unit calculation appropriately, and I calculate what the equilibrium constant is, then the value I get is a small number. So this k is less than 1. This k tells me the reaction is not any longer strongly towards product. There's, uh, the volume is large enough that the bromine atoms have a more difficult time finding each other, and they have a more difficult time uh, reacting to dimerize to form Br2. So the, the equilibrium constant depends not only on the temperature in ways that we have seen before, but it also depends on the volume, being able to calculate the right value of the equilibrium constant will depend on what our reaction conditions are, not just the temperature, but also the volume. So uh, the other thing this tells us about these equilibrium um, constant calculations is 
when we have a reaction where the number of molecules on the product side is not the same as the number of molecules on the reactant side. We have two molecules turning into one molecule, power of two in the denominator, power of one in the numerator. That meant these cancellations didn't happen as significantly as they did in the previous example. And not only did we um, not have all these terms canceling, but that meant that we had to worry about units a little more than we did in the uh, case where the number of molecules is the same on the reactant and product side. So what this means is when we have a, a reaction where the molecularity changes, two molecules becoming one molecule, it complicates our calculation of the equilibrium constant. It also calculate, uh, complicates, unfortunately, the math that we have to do when we solve equilibrium problems. And so we'll see how that works coming up next.